a hot and hazy May day, high above Crown Hill Cemetery, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway stands out on the horizon. Down below, the final resting place of those who put the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the racing map. Checkered flag, Power and Penske win it. So the four founding fathers of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway are all laid to rest at Crown Hill Cemetery. They are all here. Carl Fisher was kind of the impetus of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He was um, a marketing genius, so to speak. He was a big promotions guy, and he had this idea to build a two and a half mile over on the west side of Indianapolis to um, help make cars go faster. <laughs> Alongside of him were Newby, Allison, and Wheeler. The three of them were kind of uh, the, the financial backers. The first race was actually held in 1909. It was a 300 mile race that was stopped short because of track conditions. Um, this did not um, frustrate Carl Fisher at all. So what he did, he said, okay, I'm gonna repave this whole thing with bricks. And as we know, in 1911, the first race happened out at the Motor Speedway. All four forever etched into racing history and the bricks of the final finish line. The founders, among more than 60 racing legends, are buried here at Crown Hill Cemetery. Some names you may recognize. A Marmon, the Marmon Wasp, the first car that won the first Indianapolis 500. Duesenberg, a lot of people know the Duesenberg and the automotive family there. Cannonball Baker, um, his cross country runs and motorcycle uh, runs that he did across country and setting speed records. And Stutz, a lot of people are familiar with the Stutz names. Buddy McAtee may not be a household name, but a lot of people probably know his work, especially as president of IMS Productions, which produced and put on a lot of the races and the events um, surrounding the 500. Well, now we are going way back in history to the beginning of the Indy 500, and we are at Louis Schweitzer's mausoleum. After he was a driver, he um, served on the technical um, advisory committee there at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and the uh, Schweitzer Award is given out each year after the 500 to the engineer who showed innovation you know, in automobile and automobile racing. The Bettenhausen name, a very common name for race fans. Oh yeah, if you're a race fan, you will absolutely recognize the name Bettenhausen. Um, not only Tony Jr., um, who was laid to rest here, but his dad Tony um, was a racer and his brother Gary. Um, Tony uh, started 11 Indianapolis 500s, um, also raced NASCAR, um, and eventually became a car owner as well. So uh, very ingrained in racing and tragically, tragically he and his wife uh, passed away in a plane crash on Valentine's Day in the, in the year 2000. Hello everyone from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It seems And now we are at the final resting place the... of a voice everybody knows from the Indy 500, one Bob Jenkins, who was in the broadcast world, even says on his headstone that he was just a race fan that got lucky. Tell me a little bit more about Bob Jenkins' role in the the final finish line and the bricks. Yeah, so Bob was um, a big fan of what we were doing out here and honoring the racing legends. He was such uh, such a big race fan and very um, passionate about remembering all those who contributed to to auto racing. The 1996 Indianapolis 500 is won by Buddy Lazier. And Bob's endearing voice will live on through a new app guiding the Racing Legends Tour at Crown Hill. Jim Hurtubies remains one of the most well-known and popular drivers never to have won the Indianapolis 500. Jim Hurtubies was indeed a Hercules, a man of mythical proportions both on and off the track. I know he would be happy to know that his voice is living on here as people take these tours around Crown Hill Absolutely. Cemetery to learn about the racing legends who have been laid to rest here. Absolutely.